Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Sevtech Ages. Now I know it's been a couple days since the last episode, that's just, I've been busy with real life stuff. <laughs> a lot of real life stuff going on, of course with the move and everything. But anyways, I have been working on this area quite a bit. And you can see our Galacticraft area has been expanded. Um, I actually dismantled one of those space stations. Uh, that we had found in the asteroid belts. So I dismantled it, so I added a few more NASA workbenches, uh, cryogenic chambers, some fluid tanks from Galacticraft, as well as some magnetic crafting tables, just because they do retain their inventory. I don't know really that we'll use them all that much, but over here we've got energy storage clusters, which basically they store a lot more RF, and I did make some of these. These are advanced batteries from extra planets. They are the, um, whoops, I don't want to, I want to do that. Um, if you take a look at the batteries, uh, they're the second best battery. The only one better is the ultimate battery, or no, there's the massive battery too. There's also the massive battery. There's also an atomic battery. It's uh, infinite storage, but it has low energy output. We're not going to bother with that one really. Yeah, there's the ultimate battery and the massive battery that's a little bit better, but advanced batteries are pretty solid. So I did make two of those up and put them into our energy storage clusters. We still have one module, energy storage module there, but... Um, I imagine I'll change it out at some point. Um, right here I have an ender elevator that takes us up and down. So if we pop all the way down, takes us to our spawner area. I'm on the second floor between, you know, the mob spawning room and the Galacticraft room uh, that was previously unused. We have just a drawer system at the moment. This stores all of our metals, all of our ores. Uh, you can see most of these are backed up, 512 stacks of all these things. Honestly, metals are such an obsolete thing at this point, like I have pretty much infinite of everything. Uh, so I'm just voiding everything past 512 stacks right now. There's still more space for other things, I'll put something in there at some point maybe. Uh, you know, like dash or, you know, whatever. Um, but this is, I mean, anyways, this is going to be where processing takes place from our void miners. Um, now I will say, I don't even know that we're going to automate all of these, because most of these things I really don't have a need for this many of these things. Um, most of them, in fact. <laughs> I don't have a need for all this stuff, but um, I did set up drawers so that they're available to us. And then if we head up to the very, very top, um, our rockets, of course over here I did add a teleport that connects down to our teleport area. And then, look at this, we are up to tier 6. It actually did not take long after last episode, because the resources just start coming in so fast uh, that you really don't... It really doesn't take very long uh, for it to, you know, when you move up to a new tier. Like, for example, when I moved up to a new, like, the tier 5, uh, within the first, like, 10, 15, 20 seconds or so, I had, like, 40 Aetherium. You know, it doesn't take very long at all. Um, especially when you're running full speed modifiers. So these are both tier 6 void ore miners, void resource miners. Um, the, the, well, the ore miner... Uh, if you take a look at how much power this thing consumes, 154,340 to run it at full speed. That's per tick. So 154,000 RF per tick. You take a look at the resource miner, 19,292 RF per tick. Um, and each of these have four input routing nodes that are pulling items from them because if you take a look, they pull in items incredibly fast incredibly fast to the point that four it still steadily kind of sort of backs up but um it actually will eventually kind of balance out it never it never fills up so um, but we are getting just massive amount of materials coming in and actually probably all those are being voided at the moment or for the most part being voided and then up top here i have a tier five or a tier six fully upgraded solar panel all atheum solar cells and and whatnot, if you take a look at how much energy this thing generates, um, it generates 498,381 RF per tick. So you can see that this can run both of these. Honestly, it could run three of the ore miners by itself. Um, and then, of course, the resource miners take a whole lot less RF. So it could run a ton of those things. <laughs> like an absolute ton of them, like, uh, like 25 of them or something. So anyways, it's, uh, that's, I mean, they're maxed. Resource mining, void ore mining, max. We have massive amount of power coming in. I did at first consider putting like energy storage up there so that it could run all night as well. Because I mean, we're generating enough power that this would be able to back up, um, you know, fill up energy cells, 
to where those could run all through the night. But there's not really any point. Uh, there really is no point. If you wanted to, you could do that, and one solar cell could run these 24-7. Uh, but there's just not much point. Uh, the solar cells each, um, well, there's another one over there. We'll get to that in just a second. But they have 12 piezo modifiers, which is really like the only modifier that can go onto those. Um, and then I kind of spruce this area up with a little bit of greenery and color, um, you know, to kind of contrast against the dark look of all the tier 6 stuff. Um, and then if we pop over to this side, um, over here we have another tier 6 solar panel. Uh, this one is also fully upgraded, just like the, the one before, and I do need to light this up. Um, of course, before we had two solar uh, solar panels, one on each of those, and I decided one was plenty. We're just going to run one over there, one over here, and this is going to be for personal energy usage kind of thing. Because honestly, even if, you know, originally I was planning on getting into the uh, the turbines, or yeah, the turbines, with uh, advanced generators, but there's just not much point when you can make a tier 6 solar panel that produces half a million RF per tick, um, and they're very, very cheap at this point. Building them up, it wasn't cheap, but at this point, they're cheap. I actually ran out of nether quartz. I ran out of nether stars a couple times. I'm not out of either of those anymore, but I did run out of those. Of course, nether quartz, I had to mine it, but nether stars. Um, the resource miner pulls in soul sand, so we don't have to worry about nether stars anymore. I left it running overnight. We have a ton of nether stars now. Um, over here, I have built out five tier two rocket launch pads because we're going to need these for our extended Galacticraft work, and then we're also going to need, um, once it's all said and done, like two tier three launch pads. But there's five rockets that use the tier two launch pads, so I went ahead and set those up so that we had them available. Um, also, glass all the way down is done on this side, not on this side though. I haven't even started on this side. Uh, flooring, I'm up to this floor, and then I've also done this room as well. Uh, this is directly beneath the solar panel. So we'll probably be using this room a little bit today, so um, I did go ahead and build out that floor. But I've got to go farm up more marble to finish out this room. So shouldn't take too long. I mean, vein mining. Oh, I need to actually repair this. I almost forgot about that. I do need to repair this pick. And you can see my XP has built back up. Um, also, something that I do suggest you do. <laughs> I didn't farm all that concrete manually. I made a little system for this. So, because you use so much black concrete with that, I was finally like, okay, I'm tired of farming this stuff manually. It was just painful. Um, so, all I've got here is a block placer. I toss the concrete in there. It places the, you know, the concrete powder. And then what happens is the concrete powder just drops into the water. Um, you know, just like, let, let's actually pop over there real quick and I'll grab some concrete. Or I'll make some concrete. Because I'm going to need some more. Um, I've got 54. Yeah, I'm probably going to need a little bit more. doesn't matter if I make extra, so... So basically, if I put this concrete into here, I'm going to hold on to like two pieces. If I toss it into there, you can see after a second it'll place it and it falls on the water. Then there's just a water source back behind where that concrete falls onto. So it always, you know, that water is always flowing. And then the auto breaker just breaks it. So um, originally I had like a, I had the placer placing it into water, but the placer won't actually place the concrete in inside of a water block. Even if it's flowing water, it will not place it. So I ended up going with this and it works perfect. And I can just throw a bunch of concrete in there. You know, I was throwing in like four stacks at a time and letting it go. And it was just building up concrete. So that way I didn't have to worry about that because farming that manually was, it wasn't fun. So I was just like, okay, well, this thing's easy enough to, uh, to automate. And one thing I'm, I've been starting to work on, but I should have it done by the next episode because we're going to go back into space in the next episode. Um... But one thing I've started working on is our Tier 2 spacesuit, because it's very, very craftable. It's just, once again, it's, you know, somewhat uh, somewhat of a time sink more than anything. Uh, but you can see here, it's just armor layers again. That's titanium in this case, instead of uh, whatever it was before, uh, lead or bronze or whatever. Um, and then we have to do the unprepared Tier 2 spacesuit, which is a Tier 1 with some titanium. And then we have to make the upgraded pressure layers, which is wool cloth. Oxygen concentrators, tier one pressure layers. So we're gonna have to kind of tear those up. And then over here we've got lead and tier one radiation. So, um, which is basically, <laughs> it's basically like the same thing. It's just cheaper, kind of. You don't have to make plates out of it. Now over here I did set up a hydrator because originally I was just gonna make concrete in the hydrator from Cyclic. However, that does not work. 
because, for example, okay, it's starting to run. You could say for whatever reason, black concrete powder makes white concrete. Um, and it's, it's not using that one because I have it recipe locked. It makes white concrete, so it's completely useless. Um, I couldn't figure out any way to get it to work. It just makes white concrete, so it's bugged. Which is kind of a bummer, but it, it is what it is. So, um, And then if we pop over to the RS system, I just want to show you really, really quickly. Um, I did upgrade some storage and do a little bit of stuff like that. But over here, if we take a look, Nether Stars, we have 3.7 thousand Nether Stars at the moment. Like I said, I did leave it running for like a night. We had like 4,000 and I used up um, a few hundred of them. <laughs> Upgrading our resource miner from a tier 5 to a tier 6, it took a few hundred of them. Because whenever you go into the tier 6 stuff, like the tier 6 structure frames, which I do have a few extras of these, because I'm at the point now where they're not even hard to make, um, they require two nether stars each, and as well as athium. So, um, but good news is, if we pop down... Um, I've upgraded the storage over here, but you can see that we have 768 stacks of erodium, lytherite, chironite, uh, lonstalite. We have 207 stacks, which we only use like one, you know, for every modifier. So that's plenty of those. 704 palladium, 704 ionite, and then 768 stacks of athium. So, and that over here, 704 is the max because it's ha this one actually has a gold, some gold upgrades in it, uh, whereas these just have emerald upgrades just a heads up i did throw a void upgrade into the nether stars as well um so they do start voiding at a certain point but i, I have the storage set up to 1280 stacks so uh, which i've actually got it turned off right now just so that we kind of build up on soul sand and honestly because i don't have any use at all for nether stars past you know how much i have so we have 5.8 thousand soul sand uh this stuff yeah i just got two pieces i mean it comes in crazy fast with those resource miners and there's three more <laughs> i mean resources are just they're done you know we're done with them uh, at this point so anyways what i would like to do today is i would like to start on mechanism um, because mechanism is something that we're going to be using for we're going to need it for some of our in-game stuff for starters um, i have actually started looking towards the creative items a little bit and seeing kind of everything that i'm going to need and we're going to start getting into some of those things because, like, we have glass singularities we're going to have to start getting into. Paperclip singularities we're going to start getting into. Um, for the most part, though, looking through the creative items to craft, they're not expensive. I mean, ultimate catalysts, these aren't really all that bad because, um, I mean, you need a bunch of ultimate ingots, but at the end of the day, one of each of these, the only thing expensive right here is enhanced Galgadorian. Um, but you can see we're going to need like refined obsidian, we're going to need base essence, we're going to need supremium. Um, we're going to have to start up farming, you know, the uh, the inferium essence here soon. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, this stuff isn't too bad. We are going to have to do a little bit of mechanism uh, for some of this stuff. Honestly, I have enough hellfire that I could craft all of this. Soulforge steel is not a problem, star metal gold, but uh, we'll we'll take a closer look at that here soon. But I mean, for the most part, this stuff isn't too bad. We have redstone singularities. Each of these requiring 10,000 redstone. Uh, but if you take a look here at redstone, we have almost 10,000, plus I have pretty much endless redstone ore. So that's not a major issue. Um, but we're also going to be using mechanism for our processing, our um, metal processing and everything. Um, now, I have done some thinking, and I don't think that we're going to do like the times four, times five, any of that. Because I'm actually, I don't need that many resources. You know, originally I was thinking about doing the, uh, you know, the modular machines, the uh, the Ormatic stuff. Yeah, right here, Ormatic 5000 Mark III and Mark II and all that. But I actually don't think I'm going to bother with it because I just don't need that many materials. And I mean, that's a big multi-block and I think it actually takes a little bit to run it and I don't actually, I just don't need it. When you have a tier 6 ore miner, I mean, you can be getting one metal per, per ore. As long as it's fast, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be pulling in so many metals. Um, and in truth, the, the creative costs aren't super expensive. The only thing that's that's semi-expensive, I think, is the creative compressor. We're going to need four compressed iron singularities. So, I mean, you're talking 40,000 iron right there. Um, but even that's not all that bad. Probably the worst thing here is eight times compressed cobblestone and two four times compressed cobblestone. 
That is probably the worst thing in the whole creative list. And that is almost, it's about a third of a million cobblestone. And you can see I've got 122,000. Um, the resource miner is actually pulling in cobblestone at a decent rate. So we might have enough cobblestone, but I will say that in the next couple episodes, we're going to be setting up some cobblestone production in the event that we don't have enough. But we might actually start getting into compacting some of this stuff and allowing ourselves to be able to start making singularities because it's really just a time process. It's not really, there's not really much involved with it. So here in the next episode or two, we're going to start um, compressing things. So just a heads up. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at mechanism. So anyways, we're going to start at mechanism today. And the first thing that we're going to need to make is the, uh, the metallurgic infuser. So this right here, we're going to need to make a few of these. It's just osmium redstone furnaces. Not a problem. So let's pop over. Let's grab ourselves a little bit of osmium and a little bit of iron. And that's okay. Because we're going to be going with just base level mechanism processing because it's fast. And honestly, speed is more of a priority, I think, than doing five times processing. It just doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter um, how fast we process this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and make ourselves... Um, let's go with four... Yeah, we'll go with four metallurgic infusers. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do, now that we got our infusers made, which I actually made one too many because we're not going to need... Um, coal in this pack but I'm just so used to making four it's almost like muscle memory <laughs> so to speak um, I guess for right now what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into which this is eventually going to change and be plugged up to solar panel power um, and I may even add additional solar panels I don't know for sure but uh, for right now what we'll do is we'll just plug into here I think um, and first up I just want two metallurgic infusers and really one of these, I'm just going to dump in there. Because I don't need it, in truth. And what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and give them some power. And we're going to toss in a stack of iron in one. And this is, uh, well, we'll do a stack of iron, a stack of redstone. It's going to fill this up. It's going to start processing. And then we're going to do a stack of redstone and a stack of osmium. And get that running. Because this is going to make our two key materials for mechanism. First one being enriched alloy. You're going to use a lot of this stuff. And then the second one being basic control circuits. Because you're going to need a lot of those as well. And we'll let these things run. And what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade these infusers to infusing factories. Um, so these just require basic control circuits, iron, and then we can upgrade them again. And that's when we need the enriched alloy. Okay. Okay, so we can go straight up to advanced infusing factory. Um, elite Infusing Factory, do we want to go ahead and do this? I'm going to say yes, I guess. Maybe. Or do we want to go into Enrichment first? Um, enrichment Chamber, Steel Casing. Yeah, i tell you what, we'll just start with this stuff. Let's go ahead and grab this. And let me pop down, let me go ahead and get like... Let's see, I'm going to want another stack of iron. Another stack of osmium. Actually, two stacks of iron. Osmium and steel. I don't need that much. I'm just going to grab so we have it. And I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to have to make more glass too because I think I'm low on glass. Uh, yeah, I've got three pieces. Okay, let me go make up some more glass real quick. Um, we're going to have to be, we're going to be automating glass here soon because of the fact that we're going to need a lot of it for all those glass singularities because we need four glass singularities altogether. So we are going to get that stuff up and going you know, a lot of glass production here soon. Okay, so the enrichment chamber. Uh, for this right here, we're going to need a steel casing. So we'll go ahead and snag one of those. And then we are also going to want, yeah, everything else we've got. So there we go, enrichment chamber. And then let's grab ourselves a bit of redstone. Let's grab ourselves some diamonds. Let's see, the enriching factory. Yeah, we can actually go ahead and make some of this stuff. So, yeah, let me go ahead and make just the basic enriching factory. So there's that. And we might actually go ahead and upgrade this because it just takes advanced control circuits. Yes. Okay, let me go grab some of those. I still have a habit of coming through here even though I have that teleport. Like, it's just automatic reaction, basically. 
Okay, so we need some upgraded control circuits. Uh, which are just enriched alloy and basic control circuits. So let's get two of those. And then let me grab these. And let's go ahead and get ourselves our enriching factory. Oops. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just plug this in. I'm just plugging it in over here because we have power available. And then what we can do with an enriching factory is we can actually take uh, diamonds. We'll take diamonds and redstone. We're going to say auto sort's going to be off right now. We'll just throw in our diamonds like that, our redstone like that, and we're going to start enriching it. And this does use a little bit of power, but these things are a lot faster because you can do your upgrades. You can do speed upgrades and stuff um, through these, but they're going to process things. In the case of the advanced enriching factory, they're going to process five items at a time as opposed to one item at a time. And it's just as fast as doing you know, the standard enrichment or enrichment chamber. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take um, and upgrade our metallurgic infusers. And I'm going to take just one of these for right now, the one that I have left over here. And we are going to need two of these. And, oh wait, I need more redstone. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade this to the infusing factory. Then we'll upgrade it into the advanced infusing factory. And of course there's one tier above this which does seven items at a time. We'll get into that in just a second. But I figure we're going to go into factories just right out the gate because materials aren't an issue for us in this pack and this just is going to speed everything up by a bit. Okay so we have infusing factories and then what we can do is we can take our compressed diamonds, compressed redstone, and the nice thing about compressing this stuff first is you actually get eight times as much. So before one piece of redstone made one basic control circuit, now one piece of redstone makes eight basic control circuits. So, definitely worth doing. The reinforced alloy, we're just going to have to upgrade this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, let me grab that. And we're going to take our compressed diamonds. We're going to throw in two of those into there. And our enriched alloy. And we'll say auto sort is on. That way it splits our stacks. Now for these infusing factories and with the infusers, you're going to have to, ideally you're going to have one per material. So we're going to have one that does obsidian, one that does diamond, one that does redstone. I'm kind of moving a little bit quickly through this, but this is all like very, very common mechanisms in like most every pack, which is awesome because I love mechanism. It's a really, really fun tech mod, but I'm just trying to get through all this like basic startup stuff. Okay, and we're starting to get reinforced alloy, which is great. There is, you can see those two diamonds, basically. You know, one diamond makes one piece of compressed diamond. Two diamonds, 16 reinforced alloy. So a lot more effective than just going with the standard. Plus, you'd have to crush this stuff down into diamond dust uh, to even be able to use it. And I'm going to go ahead and toss in, um, what well, we're going to need eight of these. I'm going to go ahead and toss in eight uh, compressed redstone and then a stack of iron. Okay, I'll let them go ahead and run everything out. So we've got a stack and a half of enriched alloy. We have 54 more basic control circuits. Let's go ahead and start upgrading to factories. Uh, so these take gold and we're also going to go ahead and upgrade. Yeah, let's just pull up everything that we've done, <laughs> basically. Which after this episode, we should be able to actually set up our mechanism workshop. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to, I'm plugging into there, but we'll have a better power setup by the end of the episode. Okay, so in, uh, the Elite Enriching Factory. Okay, I actually need a few more of the, uh, the Diamond Alloy, the uh, Advanced Alloy or whatever, or Reinforced Alloy. I need a little bit more of that to be able to do this. So I'm crafting up a bit more of that because we're going to go straight for the Top Tier Factory. Then we can start doing acceleration upgrades because the Top Tier Factories are a little bit better, I think, to go for than the uh, acceleration upgrades right out the gate. Because they're so cheap and they don't require really any more power than running, you know, seven metallurgic infusers. So, um, okay, so now um, let's go ahead and take a look at upgrading our enriching factory first. So, there we go, there's that elite enriching factory. Then, our metallurgic infusers, let's go ahead and upgrade these. And once more, there we go. That's the one that I don't actually need. And then up to the next tier, advanced infusing factories. 
and then finally elite infusing factories. We're going to get three of these. We're going to have one that governs obsidian, one that governs redstone, one that governs diamond. Okay. And let's go ahead and get some of that obsidian. Let's get uh, like four stacks to start with. And we're going to have to get this stuff crushed up. So we'll just pop down here to the crusher because we need obsidian dust. So let's get four stacks of that going. And we're going to start getting some obsidian dust. And this is actually, um, is it, yeah, it's four obsidian dust per obsidian. Just trying to get all the different resources available and, you know, some of them crafted and everything uh, first thing. Okay, so let's set back up our enriching factory and bring our cable back up and then our infusing factories. And we are going to first, the enriching factory, we're going to go ahead and toss in our obsidian dust. Or, I'm sorry, we have to, we have to do it in an infusion first. So, obsidian dust with compressed diamond. We're going to do 40 of it. So, 5 compressed diamond, 40 obsidian dust, and we'll get that stuff running. It's going to make um, this right here, this refined obsidian dust. That's what we want. And there we go. There's a bit of that. And then what we can do is we can run this through the enriching factory and it's going to create compressed obsidian just like we did the other compression stuff and this stuff we'll be able to use it in the metallurgic infuser for making atomic alloys um, as well as skystone and there's actually an advancement for making skystone so let's go ahead and grab that and let me pop over let me get some cheese cards and I don't know how much skystone we actually need let's actually take a look because I don't know what all we're going to need it for I mean I don't have a ton of cheese cards at the moment I haven't spent the time you know farming a lot of it and there is essence for that as well but this sky stone sky stone to make the emmy controller okay that's <laughs> that's pretty much it okay so let's get ourselves some cheese cards i'm just going to go with eight of them because i actually don't need i don't really need these for anything at all but just so we can get this advancement knocked out because it kind of ties into mechanism uh, let's pop up here and I've got some more refined obsidian dust. I'm going to go ahead and start running that. Okay, so cheese cards go in and compress obsidian. And we'll get that stuff running. And we'll get our first bits of skystone. And unless I'm using it for building or something, I probably won't make any more because I just don't... I'm not going with uh, the AE method. Oh, no, it takes, uh, it takes two compressed obsidians worth per cheese card. So it's four per one in this case. Some, some things actually use like two times, um, you know, the compressed obsidian, but that's fine. There we go. There is our sky stone and the advancement actually wants us to get the smelted, yeah, the smelted version. So let's pop down. Let's go smelt that real quick. Okay. So sky stone and pal, there's our advancement sky stone. Okay. So that is done. And I don't, like I said, I don't really have any use for that. But I do have a use for the mechanism stuff. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. Um, now the next thing that I want to do. I want to switch gears from mechanism briefly. And if we pop down. Downstairs here. I've actually prepped up one thing in particular. And that's invar rods. I made up a bunch of invar. And you can see I've got a few stacks of invar rods. And what I want to do is I want to get into power cells. These are right here. And these are from RF tools. And I want to get the advanced power cells. These store 4 million RF. So I'm going to go ahead and get a bunch of redstone going. Um, I wish there was faster ways because it's like either the smeltery, there's also starlight transmutation with redstone ore. You can get a block um, and then you know the smeltery method but I think really the fastest way is through the metal press. But I wish there was like faster ways of doing this. But there's not really. <laughs> So I'm going to make up a bunch of redstone blocks. Um, I've got what, one in here. I'm going to make a bunch of these up. And I'll be back here in just a minute once these are done. And we'll start making ourselves some power cells. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a bunch of machine frames. There's 42. That'll be fine. And then our power cells. Uh, let's go ahead and get eight of those. That'll be fine. And then we're going to want the advanced power cells. These require infused diamonds basic power cells then four more blocks of redstone I do have more redstone going and I'm actually going to go ahead and grab like another three stacks of this 
because I'm going to want more than eight advanced power cells, but something I'm just going to kind of work on, you know, as time goes on. Really not too difficult to craft. And the infused diamonds, what we're going to need to do to get those is RF Tools Dimensional Shard Ore. We're going to have to go get ourselves some of that. Now, I haven't automated this. We are going to be automating uh, here soon. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Dimensional Shard Ore. I'm going to get like two stacks. That should be fine. We're going to pop over to the storage building. And honestly, it's pretty quick to process this stuff down. It really doesn't take very long. Uh, so I haven't worried about it too much. And we're just going to place this stuff out. This is pretty much like Skyblocks-esque. Like whenever you're breaking down lots of stuff with a hammer. It's basically what we're doing here. Like the same process. So we're just going to build this out. And then we're going to build it up. Like that. And then we're just going to vein mine it all down. So we should have plenty of dimensional shard crystals. So our infused diamonds. Let's go ahead. There's a stack of them. Okay. And then our... Um, uh, one other thing I'm going to want is the sealed aluminum wire. I want to go ahead and grab that just so we can kind of close off that area where the solar panel's at. And make it feel more like a room. And let me pop down here and get our redstone real quick. And then we're going to get our advanced power cell. So these right here. So there is eight of those. And that is 32 million RF storage already. And then I've got enough redstone running right now that we can make another eight. 64 million RF storage. Uh, so it's something that we can just kind of tear up. And honestly, I don't even have to tear it up to like astronomical amounts. Um, because realistically, we just don't need that much RF in truth. Um, but we are going to generate a decent amount of it, though. Or store up a decent amount of it, though. Because we'll be able to produce a half million, just off this one solar panel, a half million per tick. So I think that'll be alright. We'll go ahead and just bring that down, and then we're going to set up our power sails. And we're going to set all sides to accept energy in. There we go, it's going to start building up. And we'll go ahead and just bring this down. And then we'll go ahead and just build out this right here and we're going to say set all sides to input okay so this is starting to build up you can see that that one's already filled up okay so they do fill up incredibly fast with that solar panel running like four million rf is nothing um and then this one's going to fill well that one's already filled up there we go and we'll go ahead and set all these to in and then what we're going to need to do is we need to make ourselves some of these power cell cards um, I'm going to go ahead and make like a full stack. So there we go. Because uh, we are going to need these as we expand our power cell multi-block, basically. And then as we put different outputs and stuff, we'll get into that here in just a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our power cells and we're just going to put them right into this top left slot. And, or is it bottom slot? Should be top left slot. There we go. Okay, yeah, put them right here and then they pop up here. All right, so we have a link ID of 12. That is our multi-block uh, line, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our power cells and we're just going to go through and just put them right into there. And they're going to link into the multi-block. So you can see right now, there's our power storage. We've linked up three of them, so we have 12 million power storage. And we're going to go ahead and just link all of these into... Power cell line number 12. Okay, so they're all linked up, and you can see we have 64 million RF storage in this. And all three of these are acting as inputs. Now, they're limited right now to 20,000 RF per tick they can input. We can infuse these, and we may, you know, later on we may infuse the ones that the, the cables are actually inputting to, and then the ones that we're going to be outputting from. Uh, but for right now, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, that's 60,000 RF per tick going into this. Um, and then, technically, I could remove this, these right here and just have the cable run all the way down. And actually, you know what? I might do that. Let's set all of these to insert. Okay, so now all of these are able to pull in 20,000 per tick, and then we can just run our cable down like that. And, I mean, this thing's going to be filled up in, like, seconds, you know, um, because you're talking 16 right now, 16 power cells pulling in 
20,000 per tick. I mean, that's a lot of RF uh, coming in. And then, of course, I still have, uh, what, six more that can go right here, and then eight more in total that can be still be plugged up to this. And it's all fairly cheap. I mean, honestly, we crafted 16 of those cheaper than cheaper than probably a single Ultimate Energy Cube. And it already stores more RF within it than a single Energy Cube. And the nice thing is, these don't all have to be plugged up. You can come out and you can put one in another, even another dimension and have this connected to the same power cell multi-block. Okay? These don't have to connect. You know, these aren't touching these, but they're all still connected thanks to the power cell card. And if you want to make more power cell cards, like for example, if I unlink all of these and I had more power cell cards that I wanted to link to link ID 12, I can just put them right there and pow. Now they're all linked to the same connection that that power cell is. And so what I can do is I can take these power cells and I can move them throughout the base and I'll just have RF. Um, now I think by default, I think they're limited to 5,000, 20,000 RF per tick output. Okay. Um, that they can output 20,000 per tick. But honestly, 20,000 per tick, that's enough to run most things. And that's 20,000 per side. So technically I could have, you know, six sides pulling out energy, you know, into one aluminum wire line. And there you go. There's 120,000 RF per tick. And if I need more than that, I can set up an additional one next to it. You know, and there's 240,000 RF per tick. So it should be plenty of power. Now, I'm going to AFK for, or I'm going to cut for a little bit, not AFK for a bit. And I'm going to craft up a bunch more power cells. And then I'll, I'll be back uh, once I get a bit more of those crafted. Because we're going to be setting up some of them uh, for our needs. So I'll be back here in just a minute. Okay, I went ahead and brought all four of those lines down that connect into the cable. And then I added two additional lines here. So we can store 144 million RF within this, uh, which is quite, <laughs> which is quite massive um, as far as power storage, not to mention pretty cheap and um, it's all wireless too. So for example, um, I did move our mechanism machines down here. So we've got our infusing factories and our enriching factories. Then what I can do is I can toss in a power cell right here. And you can see I've got all six sides connected up with this aluminum wire. Nice thing about aluminum wire is it has no limit. It can transfer in, you know, infinite power per tick. And then all we have to do is just take this, and, and you'll notice that uh, if I drop this power cell card into here, it adds to the storage. Even though it's not plugged up, now we have 148 million storage. And we can set all sides to send energy out. There we go. And now if we take a look at, say, like the enriching factory... We drop in some obsidian dust. Um, I'm sorry, we got to... I did add all of our compressed stuff. So there's redstone, there's diamond, there's obsidian. If I toss our obsidian dust into here with the diamond, it starts running. And I mean, you can see it's not even going to scratch the energy um, that, that, that we're able to output. Because right now, this one advanced power cell is outputting 120,000 RF per tick is what it can output. Of course, we're not outputting anywhere near that. And I mean, you can see it's not even scratching our energy. Of course, this is all dependent on the time of day because, you know, once night hits, we're not going to be pulling in power. But the idea is that we're going to have so much power storage that it's not really going to matter. Because that, that single solar panel can, during the day, it can put out a half a million RF per tick. So, or, you know, right at a half a million. It's a little bit below that, but even still. And if worse comes to worse, I can always add additional power generation or additional solar panels. And like I said, I was originally thinking about doing the uh, advanced generators, but I've done those before, and I've never really ran a base in-game-wise just off of solar panels. But So this kind of seems like a fun way to go about it, I think. So we've got our mechanism area set up, and we are going to be using a bit more mechanism uh, soon. That, that'll be it for this episode. We've got all of our, uh, you know, our resources able to be generated with the enriching and infusing. Um, but we're, like I said, we're going to be using that for our ore processing system. And I'm just going to go for one times on the ores, like, you know, just, or two times, I guess. Two ingots per ore, you know, break it down. Uh, if we take a look, for example, at iron, I'm just going to be using straight mechanism for it. Because I just have infinite resources, so it doesn't really matter if I get five times materials, you know, uh, within this pack. So if we take our iron clusters, we run them through, uh, not a purification chamber, I just want the, uh, right here, the crusher from mechanism. We crush it up. Oh, we only get one for one. 
I mean, I could go with actually additions crushers, but the mechanism ones get really fast, so I don't think it really matters at the end of the day. If we get one, uh, that's fine. You know, and then we'll smelt that through energized smelters. We're going to use factories for it, so we're doing seven times plus acceleration upgrades. It's going to be plenty fast, and uh, I mean, right now I'm just voiding all the materials. So I just want something that runs through it fast, has very little overhead, you know, no liquids that I have to pump in, nothing like that. No big giant multi-block. And we can just run it all through, you know, this one little room down here. So all of our ore processing stuff will happen right in here. And I think that'll be that'll be pretty good because once you get the tier the tier six ore miners, they just resources just don't matter, you know. <laughs> of course, we've had very little care for resources throughout this whole series. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is right over here our controller. Uh, currently, we are running this with a simple combustion generator. Not really ideal, because we've had we've had issues with uh, you know with power, so that I can't actually plug up our network transmitters and receivers because they were just pulling too much power. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull all this stuff up, and I'm actually going to go ahead. Um, a lot of this stuff's going to have to get moved. So for right now, I'm going to pull up the inscriber as well. Um, I'm going to be setting this back up, but not in this room. So we'll just go ahead and pull all that stuff up. And I'll dump it into this chest here for right now. And we'll go ahead and pull up the enchantment extractor, the enchantment applicator. Those need to get moved now that we have wireless power. So I'll put those in the enchanting room. Um, and then this controller here, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to tear this system down for just a second. We're going to take our controller and we are going to shift it back. We'll have it sitting back right there for right now. I'm going to have to do a lot of reorganizing and everything. Um, and then we're going to have our aluminum wire and our advanced power cell setting right here. And we can toss our card in there and now our network has 152 million in storage. So the nice thing about this is every time you place one of these like wireless energy transfer systems basically, um, you're also expanding the storage every single time. And it's quite wonderful. And we're just going to plug all that up. We're going to say output to all sides. And there we go. Now we have enough RF generation um, that we can take our network transmitter. We can pull this up. Went ahead and reorganized our uh, cables a little bit right here. And then we can take our network transmitter and we can just plug this guy up like, you know, right there. Drop in our network card. And now, once again, we have access to all of our metals. So if we take a look here at ingots, look at that. And now I don't have to worry about the power because before we had an issue running, what is this, 226 RF per tick? Uh, just because that we were just running off that one coal generator. Now energy is no longer a concern at all. And then if it does turn to night, I mean, what's a little bit of RF per tick compared to during the day we're generating 500 you know, thousand RF per tick. I don't think we're going to be able to use that during the course of a night um, with the stuff that we're going to be plugging up to it. So, um, and then I can do, you know, another external storage. Um, I'll need to uh, synchronize this real quick. So let's grab another external storage and let me get another network transmitter and receiver and another network card. And we'll go ahead and set up another transmitter setting, you know, right here. And then we'll just pop over. And I'm going to have to plug up multiples of these across the base. But this one, I'm going to go ahead and plug into the ores. Just so I can kind of watch the ores from our network. I guess we'll put the receiver setting right here. Shift right click it. And then we'll do uh, external storage. It just kind of comes up. Whoops. Okay, we'll have that setting right there. And then I went ahead and just did a little cover over it uh, with chisels and bits. So now that's hidden away. And if we pop over to our refined storage system and we take a look, um, you can see that now all of our ores are here. So if I need them, you know, if I, if I need access to them or I need to look and see how many we have of these, they're available right here to me, uh, which is great. And we actually have enough iron and iron clusters that... Uh, well, that's capped. I think we need four altogether, but that's fine. Once we start processing, it's not going to be a problem. But I think we've got enough. We could do the singularities for that. It's not going to be a problem. 
we just have to get the processing system set up, um, which we'll do that in um, either next episode or the episode after. I think next episode we'll probably hit Galacticraft again, just kind of keep bouncing back and forth. Um, but then the following episode we're going to do ore processing, set up, and then also start making some singularities and stuff to get us ready for in-game. Um, but another thing that I want to make, if we take a look at refined storage, which we're going to be getting into more refined storage periodically uh, throughout the rest of the series, or at least the next few episodes, um, I want to go ahead and make... Oh, I guess we'll go ahead and make the wireless crafting grid, um, which I'm going to need one of these. And two of these. <laughs> so give me just a second here. I've got to make up another basic crafting table. And there is our crafting grid. And then we just have to get the wireless crafting grid. There we go. And we need to get a charger for this. Actually, we'll look at that in just a second. Yeah, let's actually go ahead and look at that. Um, the charger... Well, yeah, we can make a tier 1 charger. And I think there's an advancement for these, right? Um, yeah, the tier 3 charger, and then we need the wireless charger. Yeah, let's go ahead. There's the wireless charger. But we still have to work up to a charger tier 3. Luckily, these things are cheap, so we'll go ahead and just knock them out. There we go. And, pow, charge it up and wireless charge, and those two are done. So we can wirelessly charge ourselves up. Uh, these ones you have to stand on. These ones are just wireless. And they're super cheap. Like, incredibly cheap. Um, so I'm just going to put this setting... The first one, we'll put it right here. And you can see that it has charged up our wireless crafting grid. And I'm just going to dump this stuff into there. And so the wireless crafting grid, we can... Um, oh, wait. <laughs> Shift right click on the controller. And, oh yeah, we still have to do the wireless transmitter. Yeah. Um... What we're going to do is, there's actually an infinite one in this pack. It's the refined storage add-ons. We're going to go ahead and just craft one of these up. We're going to need two wireless transmitters. I'm going to need uh, these. And the wireless transmitter basically transmits to nearby um, wireless crafting grids. And normally with the standard one, you have to be within so many blocks. And you can upgrade it with... Um, Oh, some upgrades, right? The range upgrades. You can upgrade the range with that, but the infinite wireless transmitter, which requires a nether star, which is, I guess, rare. <laughs> I guess they're tough to get. We only have 3.7 uh, 3 thousand of them. Um, but this one, we can just put it onto a cable somewhere. We'll put it, like, right there. And now, we can open this up from anywhere. So now with our wireless crafting grid, I can teleport anywhere within this dimension. Um, like, for example, over here, I can access my wireless crafting grid. I can craft from the wireless crafting grid. And we're going to go ahead and set this to... Uh, we should be able to set it to JEI. Okay, there we go. You have to click it and then exit and then click it and then exit uh, to get it to update. Refined storage has always been a little bit buggy in my experience, but uh, that's okay. Now we can access our wireless grid anywhere in the overworld. So, for example, if I warp over to, you know, Wega's base, um, which is still kind of, I guess, kind of close to my base, but I can access this. If I warp over to um, Damien's base, which is on the other side of the overworld, right? It's pretty far away. Um, we can access our wireless crafting grid. So, we have access to this no matter where we go in the overworld. Now, it's not going to work cross dimension. So, for example, if I'm on the moon, I'm not going to be able to access it, but I can use a wireless transmitter and send the wireless connection over there and then put another infinite um, a transmitter, like this right here. We could put another one of those down and have access to it on the moon. You know, So if there's another dimension that we're using a lot, uh, we can set up wireless transfer to that dimension. But right now, I just need the old world. I mean, honestly, I do go to the other planets, like initially <laughs> but as far as like returning to other planets i don't really return to them all that often mainly mars because i go there to mine dash which won't be an issue too much longer and then i'm gonna have to set up wireless chargers over in the castle as well but uh you know whenever i get over here i can just charge up my uh my grid because it is going to use up a little bit of power you know as time goes but uh, it's not too much 
anyways, I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode. So, I mean, we got it quite a bit done. We got our power situation sorted. So we have wireless power pretty much to wherever we feel like setting up a power cell. Up to 120,000 RF per tick output. And then, of course, we can upgrade it if we so desire. You can see the power is actually starting to go down a little bit because it's nighttime at the moment. Um, it's still got power probably in the cables, maybe? I don't know. I don't know, it's still getting power from somewhere, even though it's like night. Okay, there we go. We're starting to drop on power. So you can see it's starting to drop a little bit. But is it going to run through 152 million in in a nighttime period? No. Uh, if it does, is it any real big loss? No. And um, and then it's, the storage is only going to keep getting bigger. And then if worse comes to worse, I can add another solar. Or I can do um, advanced generators for something that's just constantly generating and I mean technically I can take these power cells and I can plug them into our other power systems that we've set up like the steam system or the biofuel system and we can start generating power and having it put into those power cells through those as well so I mean you know it's it's infinitely expandable and I can do I can go other dimensions or whatever with it I mean technically I could take a solar panel to like the end set it up and have infinite 500 thousand RF per tick 24 7 you know and that's something that we may do if we find ourselves actually using enough power that it actually even matters so we'll see um, but next episode I, d I think I decided at the moment I think my plan is instead of going back into Galacticraft next episode um, we're going to take one more episode off of Galacticraft and we're going to do the ore processing system we're going to set that up we're also going to get into nanobots which would just be handy to have um, of course, if I have nanobots set up, the only nanobot system that I know of, or the only upgrade for it, that's actually even remotely expensive, because um, I'm pretty sure that regen and stuff is pretty standard, great. Um, I think the only one that's even remotely expensive is Creative Flight, um, which takes paperclip singularity, so we're going to want to get into magical crops before we get that. Aside from that, there is the Supremium that we need, which is also magical crops. Um, it's actually probably, the, I would, I don't know, it's one of, I don't know, it's actually probably the most expensive item that's crafted in the Ultimate Crafting Table. It's more expensive, I think, than most of the creative items because it takes eight singularities. Most of them only take, you know, at most four or five. So, uh, most of them actually taking a lot less than that. But most of these other items that are here are just kind of filler. Because the only things in here, I mean, I've got a VCO mantle already right there. Um, cook gas mate, I was eating that for a while. Um, air sigils are easy to craft. Um, they do require elytras, but I did stock up on elytras, so I've got a few of those. Um, but most of this stuff is pretty straightforward, standard stuff, except the singularities. So we'll probably end up getting creative flight modifier, but not right this second. But we will start getting into nanobots probably next episode as well because they're not, uh, I think the tier one is just a standard craft. Yeah. So I'll probably craft up the stuff that we need for that and we'll set, we'll set up some nanobots next episode. Do ore processing and then probably do a little bit more refined storage. Start getting into storage sales and maybe a little bit of automation with that. So, um, and then after that we'll return to Galacticraft and do another episode of Galacticraft. Um, and then probably after that we'll probably start actually additions. But we're we're definitely on track to to complete this to complete this pack, do all the creative items and all that, because they're really not expensive, um, in truth. <laughs> they're really not. Like it's one of the cheaper packs as far as creative items that I've seen. So, um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And, of course, if you guys have any questions about what we covered today, do let me know down in the comments, and I'll do my best to get those answered for you. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.